All right, hello everybody. Uh, we're going to be going through a tutorial of how you can use buttons and selects in your commands and messages in Discord Bot Studio. Um, so this is part of the new update for DBS uh, version 2.0. At the time that this video is released, 2.0 is going to be in beta. Um, so if you'd like to join the beta, you can um, join our support server. Uh, the link is here and then you can figure out the information about how to get on the beta branch in Steam. Otherwise, if you're watching in the future, 2.0 might just be out publicly, in which case um, you can just use DBS through Steam like you normally would. Um, so to get started, I'm gonna be showing you how to add buttons or selects through the UI. Um, <clears throat> so you can add buttons or selects to any response type that sends a message basically. So think like an embed response or a send message response. Um, you can add buttons or selects to either of those. So to show you what I mean, I'll open this node. So this is a send message node. Um, and as you can see, there's a new section down here that says message action rows. Um, so you can read the text here, but basically this is a discord limitation that you can have up to five of these action rows and then in each action row, you can either have one select or up to five buttons, and you can't combine those. So if you have buttons, you can't have selects in the same row and vice versa. Um, but you can have different rows, uh, button row and select row on the same message, that doesn't matter. Uh, you just can't do multiple in the same row. So to show you how this works, um, first I'll do a button row. So I'll just click add button row. And then you can see we get this little UI here. Um, it might not really make intuitive sense right now until we add some buttons, but basically we can either edit this row or remove the row. Um, and if I add a select row, you can see it's kind of the same thing, but there is a placeholder to show you what a select would look like. Um, so first we can just go into the button row and by clicking edit, and then you'll see we get a new pop-up here and it's asking us to edit this row. <clears throat> so. You can add and remove buttons um, using this UI, just like that. And as it says, you can have up to five buttons per row. So just to show you the basics of how this UI works, I'll make one button in this row. So these two fields here, um, the label you're going to need, so that's what text is actually gonna be displayed on the button. And then the custom ID is important because um, when a button is clicked, it's gonna fire an event and you can leverage that event in Discord Bot Studio. So you're gonna wanna take note of what this custom ID is so that you can figure out what button got clicked um, when you're using that event. Style, um, these are built into Discord. So primary is like the bluish purple color um, that you would associate with Discord. Um, secondary, success is green. Secondary is kind of gray, success is green. Um, danger is red, and then link is gray as well, except you can only use that um, like as a link to a, a URL. It's not gonna be used for any event firing or anything like that. So just to show you, um, I'll do success and that'll be green. Then we have the option to paste an emoji here um, if we want to and that'll show inside the button as well. Just for um, simplicity's sake, I'm not gonna do that. And then URL, as I mentioned, you can have a link style button. And if you do that, you're gonna have to include a URL. And then when that button's clicked, it's gonna take um, whoever clicked it to that URL. So now if I click save, you can see that this little preview area has updated and you can see what that button is going to look like. So since I picked success for the style, um, the button background is green. And then if we edit this row and added more buttons, they would show up um, as well, like in the order that they would show um, in Discord. So then I'll show you as well, selects are um, fairly similar. If I edit this row, um, basically there's a custom ID for the select, which is the same thing as the button. You're gonna leverage this um, on the event side of things to figure out which um, select was actually interacted with. So. And then placeholder text. So this is like what shows in the drop down menu before any option has been picked. 
And then you can choose um, a minimum or maximum number of selections. So if you set the minimum number of selections to be two or more, then it's um, a multiple select at that point. Um, so the only way users can use it basically is by choosing two or more options. Um, I'm gonna leave those alone for now. Um, these are not required fields. And then down here you can see we have the option to add options. So a select is basically a drop down menu, right? And when you click it, um, there's gonna be a drop down with multiple options. So this is basically adding each of those options. Um, so I'll just show you how that would work. So for the label, So right, so I set the label, that's what's gonna show as the option text, and then the description is going to be like a, a longer form um, describing what, what this option does. Um, value, this is important, this is similar to um, like the custom ID for a um, select or a button. Uh, basically like you're gonna wanna find this as it says on the event side of things to know what option a user actually picked. And then for emoji, similar to a button, you can have an emoji show in the select option. I'm not gonna do that for now. And then you have the option to show one of the options by default. Um, and you can only do that for one option, obviously, because there can't be more than one showing. Um, but I'm not gonna choose that for the time being. So I'll save that. Um, and then make sure after you save both of those that you actually save the node itself um, so that that all gets saved. And then I can go ahead and run the bot and just show you first of all what this actually looks like. So the command that that response was attached to was just the default info command that gets associated. Um, oh, I guess I have it sent to general. So anyways, um, this is the response that we get and you can ignore this stuff. This is just what's included in the info command by default. Um, but you can see we have the first button, it's green because we picked a success button. And then the select, which shows the default value which we put, which is pick an option. And then if we click on this, we can see our option there. Uh, we only added one, so we can't scroll to see any more, but that's the label and then that's the description. And if you picked an emoji, it would be showing on the left side here. All right, so now that we've added a button and a select into our message response, um, I'll show you how you can actually, um, yeah, basically respond once a user has either clicked the button or picked a select option. So if we head back to Discord Bot Studio and go to the events page, um, if this is new to you, you can see there's a ton of new events in 2.0. Um, I think there's like 22 new events. But for this video, what we're gonna be focusing on is this button interaction and select interaction event. So as the name would imply, when a button is interacted with, um, i.e. clicked, this event is gonna get fired. And then the same thing, but for a select for this one. So just to show you what that actually means, I will add a little send message node here um, and I'll attach it to the button interaction event. So I'll open this up um, and as you can see, there's a new category of variables available to you. Um, so what I wanna do is send this message in the same channel that the button was clicked in. So this event variables category holds all of the default variables for each event in Discord Bot Studio. So previously you could click into event nodes and rename these, but now they are just all standardly named for you. Down here near the bottom, you can see button interaction is one of the event variables, and that's the one we want. Um, we can see it's from the event button interaction, which is the one we're using. And then here, uh, we want the channel ID, so I'm gonna go ahead and just take the channel ID of the channel that this interaction was sent in. So that should send a message, send this message to the channel that the button was clicked in. Um, and then just, we can leverage this same variable here to show some information about the button that was clicked. So 
earlier in the video I, I told you about how custom ID is going to be used to determine which button was clicked. So just showing that um, I'll insert the custom ID field and then I'll just do that for now. Or I'll just label it, I guess. And then save that. And now we can go back and restart the bot and see what that does. So I'll pop back into Discord and I will rerun the info command. And now if I click first button, you can see a couple of things have just happened. First of all, this is an automatic response from Discord um, showing that an interaction has been kicked off. So the bot name is thinking is like the default um, response. And that's simply because in Discord Bot Studio, all interactions are deferred by default. Um, if you don't know what that means, essentially it's because there could be some long-winded process in DBS um, after an interaction happens. So it's deferred by default. And then later on, you can reply to it to show something here. Um, but we haven't done that for now, but I can show you how to do that next. So anyways, um, showing you from the response we just made, we can see custom ID is first button, and that's correct. That's what we set the ID to for this button. So now I will show you how we can solve this um, thinking message here and instead reply with that info um, here. So if we pop back into DBS, I'll go ahead and stop the bot. And then I will scroll down um, and add another response. So this time I'm going into the interaction category and then I'm going to do reply to interaction with message. So I will go ahead and also connect that to the button interaction event. And what this node does is lets you reply to an interaction. So as I said, the interaction is deferred when it first happens. That's why this thinking message is shown. And in order to replace that with some text, we want to use this um, reply to interaction node. So the first field we're asking for here is the interaction object. So if we go back to event variables and find that button interaction variable, um, the first thing is, is the interaction object itself. So we will insert that. And then the response message text, um, we can just say, replying to a button click. And then go ahead and save that. And then we'll start the bot again and see what that has done. So I'll send the info message again so we can get a new interaction going. And then if I click first button, now you can see instead of getting this bot is thinking message, we got replying to a button click. And that's because we replied to that button click interaction. And then for um, the custom ID, that's, that's the same since we didn't change that response at all. All right, so for the select, um, you're basically going to be doing the same thing, but instead of using this button interaction event, you're going to use the select interaction event. Um, I'm not going to show that. The variable has basically all the same fields as the button interaction. Um, so if you want to find that one that is down here, um, you can see you basically have all the same fields to play with. Um, so that's pretty much all I'm going to show for this video. Um, you may be wondering right now, how do you determine which um, button was clicked? Like if you have multiple buttons or which select uh, was used and which select option was chosen. Um, I'm going to make a detailed video for that stuff since this one has already gone pretty long. Uh, this was more so just trying to show you how exactly you get the button or select into the message in the first place. So yep, look out for that next uh, tutorial. It'll be a little more in depth.